Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to end Ramadan with shukr, with gratitude, with thanks. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ To end the blessed month with thanks and gratefulness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us the opportunity, the strength, the courage, the health, to worship Him in Ramadan, to do all the good deeds in Ramadan. So Allah wanted us at the ending of Ramadan to thank Him, to be grateful to Him. And then now we have started the season of Hajj. And Hajj revolves around Sayyidina Ibrahim salam and his family. And one of the quality of Sayyidina Ibrahim salam that Allah highlighted in the Quran was the quality of shukr and gratefulness. As Allah says, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifa wa lam yaku min al mushrikeen shakiran li an umi. Shakiran li an umi. He was extremely grateful for all the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. So we ended Ramadan with shukr and we started the season of Hajj with shukr, giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today's khutbah is going to revolve around two verses of Surah Al Luqman, the advices of a father to his son. Father's Day, what, a couple of weeks ago? The advices of a father to his son. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses in the Quran not to mention the names of people. In Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about three Rasul, three messengers who came to their nations, but their names are not mentioned. Three Rasul, three important people, their names are not mentioned. وَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهِمُ اثْنَيْنِ فَعَزَّزْنَاهُمَا بِثَالِثِ This is the ayat of the Qur'an in Surah Yasin that Allah spoke about the three Rasul, the three messengers. Musa a.s. he went on a journey to seek knowledge from a person. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention the name of that person. The name of that individual is mentioned in the traditions, in the hadith, as we know as Khidr alayhi salam. But nowhere in the Quran you will find the name Khidr mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him, Abdam min ibadina. He was one of our servants. So Luqman radiallahu anhu is not a prophet, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned him by name in the Quran. Allah mentions him by name. There is a chapter named after him, Surah Al-Luqman. And Allah mentions him by name in the Quran. This is a special honor and privilege given to this individual. The greatest ummati of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest follower of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the galaxy of the prophets is Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu's name is not mentioned in the Quran, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about him in the Quran, but not by name. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا if you can recollect or remember the story of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in the cave of Thawr when they were migrating from Mecca to Medina, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu accompanied the Rasulullah in the cave. So Allah is saying, إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ When he said to his companion, Allah did not say when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu because who was the companion of Rasulullah in the cave? It was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention his name. 
Allah says, the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the conversation of Luqman Alayhi Salam that he had with his son, and we know the advices of the son of the of Luqman alayhi salam to his sons are mentioned in the Quran. There are more than ten advices of Luqman alayhi salam in the Quran that he gave to his son. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala documented and archived in the Quran that would be a lesson for us till Qiyamah. Right? So this conversation of Luqman alayhi salam with his son was in private. It was a private conversation. But this conversation was so important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala documented it in the Qur'an and this conversation will provide guidance for people till Qiyamah. Understand that. This conversation between the father and the son will provide guidance for every parent till Qiyamah. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ we have granted Luqman hikmah and wisdom. What is wisdom? Before I mention what is wisdom, Luqman alayhi salam was known as Luqman al-Hakim, Luqman the wise. Once, his master told him to slaughter an animal and to bring the two best parts of that animal to him. Luqman alayhi salam went, he slaughtered a sheep, and he brought the tongue and the heart <coughs> to the master. What the master wanted? The two best parts of the animal. So he brought the tongue and the heart. On a second occasion, his master told him, go and slaughter an animal and bring the worst two parts to me. <coughs> Again he went, he slaughtered a sheep and he brought the tongue and the heart. The same two that he brought before, the same two he brought again. So his master said to him, why did you bring the same two parts in both instances? So he said, the tongue can be the best part if it is used properly. The heart can be the best part if it is used properly. Likewise, the tongue can be the worst part if it is misused. The heart can be the best part if it is misused. You can use this tongue to be grateful and you can use this tongue to be ungrateful. Someone asked him, what made you so wise? What made you so great that your rank is so high? Your status is so high. You are so respectful amongst people. So he said four things. Number one, truthful speech. Truthful speech, number one. Number two, he said, fulfilling of your trust. Number three, he said, leaving what does not concern you. What does not concern you, don't indulge. Leave it alone. And number four, he said, watching of my tongue. How I use my tongue. These are the four things he said that made me great, made me wise. So what is hikmah? Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ We granted him hikmah. And Allah is saying this, we granted him hikmah, wisdom. Hikmah means beneficial knowledge that is acted upon. Understand that. Beneficial knowledge that is acted upon. A person may have a lot of knowledge, but that does not mean that he has wisdom. You may be very intelligent, very wise, but that does not mean you are a man of wisdom. Wisdom is to have deep knowledge about things and live by them as well. Not only possess the knowledge of things, but you live by them as well. So Luqman السلام, lived a certain way practically. The summary of his life was that to be grateful to Allah. Just like Ibrahim السلام, was grateful to Allah, the summary of the life of Luqman السلام, was to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So Luqman lived a life telling himself, speaking to himself over and over and over again. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. He is talking to himself to be grateful to Allah. And this is so important because many of us are going to find ourselves looking at our problems in front of us. Many of us may have, may seem to have, I mean, I'm using the word seem, may seem to have more problems than blessings. Why is that so? We analyze our problems. We count our problems. Our problems are always in front of us. And we ignore the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ That we have created man drowned in problems and in difficulties. Drowned. We are always surrounded with something or the other. Because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. And when we are surrounded by problems, we become pre preoccupied with the negatives. And when we become preoccupied with the negatives, there is no way we can be grateful for the positives. No way we can be grateful for the positive. What are the positive things in our lives? We can never be grateful because we are always preoccupied with negativity, with the negatives. The only way we can become grateful if we realize and recognize something good has happened to us or someone has given us a gift whereby you may thank him. Allah gives us everything. How much do we thank Allah? So Luqman alayhi salam he used to tell himself, no matter what happened, what the circumstances are, I have to look in my life and see what I need to be grateful for right now. He used to tell himself that. No matter what circumstances come in my life, I need to look into my life and see what am I grateful for at this moment. At this time, human's nature is such that they are extremely ungrateful. Allah says in the Quran, Inna al-insan la zalumun kafar. Inna al-insan la zalumun kafar. Man is extremely ungrateful. What is one of the ways to be extremely ungrateful? is that we always have reasons to complain. We find reasons to complain. What about the things of life? You can never find a time to look for something positive to be grateful for because you are consumed. A person is consumed by complaints and negativity. Now there is a difference between shukr and hamd. We know praising Allah and giving thanks to Allah. We normally hear these two phrases. We thank Allah and we praise Allah. Anybody starts a khutbah, you hear praises and thanks to Allah. But there is a difference between praise and thanks. Quran begins with Alhamd. Allah says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So Alhamd is a combination of two things. Alhamd is what? A combination of two things. It is a combination of gratitude and praise together. That is hamd. Gratitude and praise together. For example, you can see a nice car and you can praise the car, but you didn't thank the car. Did you? You see a car or you see a, a nice house and you praise the house. You thank the car. I mean, you praise the car, but you do not thank the car. But if someone give you that car, if someone give you that house, you will thank the person. You will be grateful. So with people and with things, praise and thanks don't always go together. They don't always go hand in hand. 
But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both of these things, praise and hamd goes hand in hand. They go together. We thank Allah and we praise Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Luqman alayhi salam, I have granted you hikmah, anishkur lillah. For this ni'mah that I've given you, thank me for it. Thank me. وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِي And whosoever learns from this, from whatever Allah has given to you and I, if we learn from it and we become grateful, then we are doing so for our own selves. Allah tells us that. فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِي we are not doing another person a favor when we thank Allah. We are not doing Allah a favor when we thank Allah. For Allah says, وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِي You yourself become the beneficiary of that thanks. The thing is either I am greedy and unhappy and all the time I am dissatisfied with everything in life. It's either I'm greedy and I'm unhappy. And no matter what comes in my way, I am still dissatisfied. If this is who I am, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are really hurting yourself. You are what? You are really hurting yourself. You are drowning yourself in negativity. And it become, it become paralyzing to you. You cannot raise above that. You know, a life of gratitude liberates you. It frees you. It gives you to the energy. It makes you optimistic to do the things that you weren't able to do at one time. Because it liberates you. On a macro level. On a macro level. We as human beings, we are addicted to negativity. And instead of looking positive, we say, you think that you are doing something good? Isn't that what we say? Brother, you think that you are doing something good? What about all the other unsolved problems that we are having? You think you are doing something good? What about all the other things? We immediately turn the positivity into negativity. We immediately turn the positive into negative. So if you are always complaining and upset and there is not a happy look on your face, then life will become difficult for you. Even people around you may not want to be around you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيذَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ at O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you were hard and harsh with people, with your sahaba, لَنْ فَضُّوا وِلْحَبْ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ They would have never come close to you. Because your attitude would have chased them away. You would have never gotten them to come close to you. You know, Musa alayhi salam, he crossed the Red Sea with the Israelites. Allah mentioned this in many places in the Quran. They are now in the promised land, so to say. But in the promised land, they were homeless. Thousands of them homeless in the desert. No roof over their heads. Men, women, children crying, confused. They don't have anything. And Musa alayhi salam is telling them, He's giving them a bayan, he's giving them a lecture. All the people, no food, no shelter, no home. What would you and I have done? Huh? And Musa alayhi salam, he's giving them a lecture and he's telling them, la in shakartum la azidannakum. That if you are grateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you more. Musa alayhi salam should have tell, being, he should have told them, have patience. Right? Isn't that what we tell people, have patience? Allah will change situations for you later on. But He is telling them, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ If you are grateful to Allah, Allah will give you more. So they will, they will tell Him, what can we be grateful for now? We don't have anything. We don't have a shelter over our head. We don't have food. 
Children are crying. What is there to be grateful for? What is there to be grateful for? But they did not understand. The need to be grateful for it. They, were, they just came over the sea safe. They were not killed by Pharaoh and his enemy. They were no longer slaves. Isn't that something to be grateful for? Your women are no longer humiliated. Isn't that something to be grateful for? And Allah changed their situation, made them the best of people. You know how Allah descended His bounties upon them? وَنْزَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمُ الْغَمَامِ Clouds always used to cover them. No sunlight. Sunlight would not touch them. Clouds would always be above them. وَنْزَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَى Ready-made food will come from the sky for them. They don't need to cook. They don't need to have a refrigerator and put food. You cook food for today for tomorrow. That was not needed. Every day, Allah would Send down food from the sky. They never they didn't used to wear need clothing because the clothes that they had on, when they would grow, the clothes also will get bigger upon their skin, upon their bodies. This was the bounty of Allah upon them. But they didn't, they didn't want that. They wanted onion and, and dal and, and adas and basal and this and that. That's what they wanted. What Allah was giving them, they didn't want that. So, there is always things to be grateful for in life. There is always things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you out of. There is always something that you could have been far away from. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved you from that. Allah says, if you can be grateful, I will give you more and more and more. Don't look. Don't look what you had. Look at what you have. Don't look at what you had, but look at what you have. And Allah says, La azidannakum. I would give you more and more and more all of the good in life. And if you are not grateful, Allah says, Woman kafa, fa inna Allah ghaniyun hamid. Whoever wants to be ungrateful and always complain, then understand Allah is not in need of your gratitude. You think Allah wants me and you to thank Him? Allah is not in need of that. We need praises, human beings, right? We feel very esteemed when we are praised. When someone says something good about us, we feel good. We saying something good about Allah does not make Allah higher than what He is. So Allah does not need our gratitude. Allah does not need our praise. Whether we are grateful or not to Allah, whether we praise Allah or not, Allah says, I am Hamid. All praises and all thanks already belong to me. Already belong to me. So it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Understand, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Two people can be given the same thing. And one person can be grateful and the other one can be ungrateful. The person who will be grateful, he will benefit in this world and in the akhirah. And the one who is ungrateful will lose out in this world and in akhirah. You see, the heart of our relationship with Allah is actually gratitude. The heart of our relationship. We have so many relationships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the heart of our relationship with Allah should be gratitude. And a father needs to teach his children to be grateful. Remember Luqman is telling his son, he's advising his son. Today for some of us, our children live a lot more easier life than our lives. And you analyze your life. Analyze your children's life. Our children are living an easier life than, than our lives. They don't see the difficulties you went through and the level of struggle you went through in your life to make them where they are. When your teenage child is saying, 
You know, I am not sure what kind of car I'm going to get. <laughs> what? I am not sure what kind of car I'm going to get. I am not sure what kind of college I'm going to go into. And you are thinking about yourself. Is that true? You are thinking that you used to be yelled at for reaching at work two, three minutes late. You are thinking about yourself, the struggle that you went through, you went through in life. Today, our children, they are so entitled. What are they? They are so much entitled. And that is not a sign of gratefulness. We have to teach them responsibility. And we have to teach them the value of life. Why? Because their eyes are always on the next iPhone or the next gadget out there or the next car or whatever it is. Their eyes are always on it, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, Anishkur lillah. Thank Allah for what you have, not what you had or what you will be having, what you have right now. We as parents, we firstly we need to be grateful to Allah we need to show that gratitude to Allah and then we teach our children the gratitude the value of things in life appreciating what they have and not keeping their eyes on what they don't have today we are turning our children into consumers you know that we are turning our children into consumers and if they don't get what they want, we, be, we are the ATM machines for them. We have turned them into consumers. And if they don't get what they want, you will find even some children threatening their parents. You don't get this for me, I'll commit suicide. You don't get this for me, I'll do this. So the parents now become helpless. Because we are, we are what? We have made them consumers. Children have to be guided that they will become what you make them become. Yes. Create a balance with your children. If you, as parents, and your children cannot be grateful to Allah, then how are we going to be grateful to others? If we don't teach them to be grateful to Allah, then a moment will come. Listen to this. A moment will come in life. If you don't teach them to be grateful and responsibility in life and value in life, a moment will come that they will become independent. Remember the word, consumers. A moment or a time will come that they will become independent and they will have nothing to do with you. You fed their greed and now they can feed their greeds themselves. You are feeding their greeds. Now they become independent. They don't need you as a parent any longer. So what they say? Bye-bye. Goodbye. I can take care of myself now. We did not teach them responsibility. We did not teach them value. We did not teach them to be grateful. So now we made them consumers and they're saying bye-bye to us. Allah tells us in the Quran, إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ fitna." Your children and your wealth, massive trials for you. Massive, Allah says, children. And what is the reason for this? It is because money and children, when you don't handle them correctly, they become a massive trial for you. If you don't handle them correctly, and they become a huge disaster. You know, we normally use the phrase, you're handing them the gold spoon. You're handing them the gold spoon, so this is what it's become today. We have to sit with them, talk to them, have conversations with them, as Luqman salam did. Teach them to be grateful. I'm going to conclude with this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about ungratefulness in this ayah, the word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used, when Allah, when Allah spoke about gratefulness, Allah says, وَمَنْ يَشْكُرْ Whomsoever thanks Allah thanks or will thank Allah Allah use for gratefulness the present tense verb 
or the future tense verb. When Allah speaks about ungratefulness in the Quran, Allah says, Woman kafar. Allah used the past tense verb. What does this tell us? This, in actuality, Allah is telling us that shukr is continuous. Whoever it continues to be grateful, whoever is right now and continues to be grateful, we need to continue to thank Allah. Continue. And if perchance you lapse in not being grateful to Allah for His bounties upon you, then it's okay. Occasionally you, 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 you lapse. But if this has become a pattern of your life, ungratefulness, then you are in serious problems. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word kafar, woman kafara. And what is the word for kufr, disbelief? Kafar also, right? Can you see? Allah is using the word kafara for ungrateful, and Allah uses the same word for disbelief. This by itself tell you how serious is ingratitude. But Allah uses the same exact word, woman kafara. So, continuously thank Allah for His blessings upon you. And thank the people who are involved in your lives. Even if they have done one thing for you. Luqman salam, he told his son, and I'll conclude with this, he said, Oh my son, remember one thing and forget the other. Remember one and forget the other. He said, Ihsanuka ilan nas. Your kindness towards people, do kindness towards people and then forget about it. Don't harp upon it. Don't mention about it. Do as much kindness you can do to someone and forget about it. And the other he said, Wa And people's people in gratitude towards you. People evil towards you. Don't also remember it. Forget about it. For, completely forget about it. So my dear respected brothers and elders, as I said, have shukur in your lives. Keep thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all His blessings in your life. And Allah will continue to give you more. Don't have an unsatisfied attitude. Be grateful and Allah will continue to give us. The ending of Ramadan tells us this, as I've mentioned in the beginning. The ending of Ramadan, Allah mentions the ayah, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ It tells us this, that you don't only thank Allah in Ramadan, continue. And the season of Hajj, as I've mentioned, Ibrahim السلام, was the greatest person who thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shakiran li an'umi. So let's develop this quality of always being grateful to Allah and also grateful to people who are nice to us in our lives.